You don't even know my Google Classroom code, do you? Angel, somebody, Angel Karen, somebody over here. Remind me when I get done to give her that because I'm, you know, I'm going to post videos and all that jazz. Life's back to normal now. Okay, so we need to graph this function and we need to determine its domain and range. So when I graph it, I press second, I go to y equals, I press second square root, I did x plus 2 minus 3. I've done something wrong right now. What have I done? <laughs> Okay, I'll give every group a point, but I'm going to give two an extra point. Then negative three is under the radical, so I need to remove that. And I'm going to do the minus three out here. I press enter, I press graph. Now yours may or may not instantly graph. I understand that we've had to mess with some calculator functions because of the rational functions chapter you did, which I'm sure was just as much fun as the logarithms chapter. Um, we can all complain about logarithms another day. Mm. Um, anyway, so if yours is not um, if yours is not graphing, if you want to check the window or the zoom, I love to zoom standard, and it makes it a negative 10 by 10. Or if you press window, like I'm saying, it always says negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. I like I like to see my graphs like that. Now I understand when you were looking for holes or zeros or asymptotes or whatever, you needed maybe a different view, but this will do for us. Now we could sketch set. Lord help me. We could sketch this on our paper, but again, it's multiple choice, so that seems dumb. Um, instead, I'm just going to write characteristics of it. So let's see. For graph, I'm going to write it over here. That plus 2 and that minus 3. How did they help me move? I know plus 2 made me move left 2, and table 5 can get a point. And the minus 3 made me move, and table 2 gets the point. Now, I can do this because these are my calculators. These are not yours. You cannot. Uh, the original parent graph was like this, still an arm, but it was at the origin. The plus two made it move left two. The down three made it move down three. So that's why the arm literally got picked up, moved left two, got moved down three, and here's my new guy. Okay, let me undo that. Do not break my heart because I was not here doesn't mean you should have forgotten. Domain and range. Domain is us driving along that x-axis. What is the domain for this function? When can I reach out and touch it? Yeah, negative two to. Yes, I first touched him at negative two, and then I kept on touching him forever. So how would I write that? Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna give Angel the point. She she pretty much had it. I just need a little bit of a reminder for that. Why am I putting the bracket by the negative two? That's, and I can actually touch it there where it starts. And you can have a point for that, Ellie. Remember, we were doing some piecewise where it would be like a hole. And you literally couldn't put your finger on it. If you can touch it, it's the bracket and not the parentheses. I know that sounds really silly, but I've seen so many ACT questions where like the difference between two answer choices is a bracket or a parentheses. So it's an important distinction. Okay, the range is us driving along that y-axis. When can I first reach out and touch it as I drive along the y-axis? It looks like, ne is it negative two? We need to make sure, so we could, well, I'm, I'm, I'm even going to be this easy today. I'm not even going to make you do that. She's being for reals. We're good for her. Um, you know we put down three, right? So I know it was a three. So it's from negative three to infinity. Okay, so we're probably going to do about four problems each day until, or probably some more than that some days. But since I rambled on so long about my kid at the beginning, we're not going to do any more than that today. So I need you to not lose this piece of paper because Delaney would like her 100 points in the 60% category for no reason. Um, and I put this away somewhere safe. And let's go look at your 12-1 trig notes. Now there are like, let's see, Nick, Ryan, 
Poor Ellie. No, not in here. No. Yeah, Nick Ryan and Ellie already had me last year. So there's no way they messed up this 12 wine because literally they already knew it. But I don't know who you had for geometry and that was a long time ago. So maybe this was your first experience with trig. So maybe it hasn't gone well. I, I don't, just don't know. Trig is my favorite part. And if you're like me and trig is pretty cool, it'll be pretty cool in pre -cal and pre-cal and any other math class you take. But trig is the best. If you don't know this acronym, I say SOCATOA. Some say SOCATOA. Tomato, tomato. Um, you need to know it. It helps you think things through. There are six trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant. Yes, you need to know those, especially on problems that say find all six, then you have to find them all. So if we're looking, I understand you've already completed these notes, but I'm willing to take any questions now. Did anyone have any problems finding the six trig values? Okay. Yes, like I see Miss Weathers went over here and worked out how to find the third side. She used the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. I don't always have to do that if I get a point because I know Pythagorean triples. Like 3, 4, 5, 8, 15, 17. Um, so if you know your triples, 7, 24, 25, if you know your triples, I already knew that one was a 15. I already knew it was 5, 12, 13. I don't have to use Pythagorean theorem. Now, if you don't know those, Pythagorean theorem will always save the day. Always. Okay, if there are no questions about these, go on to the next side. So I see that there were some problems where you had to... Like you were given tangent A is 7 over 12 and you had to find cosine A. Were there any problems with 1, 2, or 3 down here? I see y'all stopped on number 3. We could finish it. Make sure we're on the same page. In fact, let's do that. So number 3 down here. And I am going to show you that I do not have to be like Miss Weathers. Or, you know, anyone can have their own thoughts. So we're told specifically in the directions. It says there is a right triangle. So regardless, yes, there has to be a right angle. But Miss Weathers put her B down here in the corner. I'm going to put my B up here. Does not matter where you put the B. As long as he's not the right angle, you're going to go. Now, I was told in the problem that sine of B is 3 over 8. What two parts of the triangle do I need to figure out sine? You're good. What two parts do I need? Sine. Sine is what over what? Sine is opposite over? Yes, sine is always opposite over hypotenuse. So that helps me know that really the 8 is the hypotenuse. So in this triangle, where do I put the 8? Okay, and yes, so the hypotenuse is always across from that right angle. So if you didn't know that, I even draw me an arrow. The hypotenuse is always across from that right angle. Always. The hypotenuse is the easiest part to spot. Now, as for the opposite and the adjacent, it depends on the B. When Miss Weathers set this problem up, opposite of B was this side over here. But since I put B in a different spot, the opposite of my B is actually over here. So I'm going to put the 3 down here. Now I need to find this missing side. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now I could do 3 squared plus x squared equals 8 squared. It doesn't matter if I put the 3 in for the A, if I put the 3 in for the B. None of this matters except the 8 has to be the C squared. Why is that? It's always the hypotenuse. So you can get a point. 6, you're being quiet. Okay, so if I so I have 9 equals 64, so you can see how we got x squared equals 55. So I get x equals square root of 55. 
there is someone who, someone could ask me a, a, a good question right there. Before I left, we would have put plus or minus square root of 55. Now all of a sudden we're just putting the positive version. Why is that? Does anyone know why? Like, why do we drop it? Yes. Yes. One can get a point. So we literally dropped it because when we're talking about an actual triangle, so an actual length measure, it can only be positive stuff. You can't be negative three centimeters tall. You can't be negative 36 inches tall or whatever. You can't be negative when it comes to lengths. So there is no minus square root of 55 because we're talking about the length of a side. Okay, so sorry, I nerded out. So here's what stinks. And Cooper's like me, and he kind of, you know, super excited. He got an answer. Sadly, on this semester exam, that's going to be one of the answer choices. And that's not the final answer. So just make sure you read back through the question, because the question didn't say what's the length of the third side. The question said, what is tangent of B? So we need to find tangent of B. How do we find tangent of B? It is opposite over adjacent. So for us, opposite, we decided was the 3. Adjacent, this was the opposite, which means this one has to be the adjacent. So opposite over adjacent would be 3 over that side we just found was square root of 55. I cannot leave it like this. I have to multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 55. So it ends up being 3 square roots of 55 over 55. Why can I not leave it? I can't leave it with the square root in the bottom, so I multiply by this. What's it called when we multiply by that? It's called blanking. Yes. Yeah. Say it. Yeah, we're rationalizing the denominator. So I get a point. If it was on the top, we'd be good to go. It's only when it's in the bottom. It's like on this problem over here. When you top, we were good to go. You only had to mess with it when it was in the bottom. That darn denominator. Okay, so let's look at the next page, which you've already completed as well. So in, these, um, in, the, in this kind of problem, you're actually given a value for an angle, and you have to solve for the length of a side. Sometimes it's easy, because the x ends up being in the numerator, like number 3 was easy, number 5 was easy. As long as x is in the numerator, it's easy. It's harder when we set up our proportion. We end up having x in the denominator, like 1, 2, or 4. Does anyone need me to work number 6, or do you have this? You're pretty good with these. Okay. Perfect. Good. Now, I see Ms. Weathers put a note of calculator must be in degree mode. And we're dealing strictly with degrees. Does anyone know how to put their calculator in degrees or how to check that? What button are you pressing your calculator to check the... Yes, I heard it from... Didn't I hear it from you? No, yes. Oh, okay, thank you for your honesty, six. You can still have a point. I know you said it. You can have a point. Five. Someone else said it, and it was voice, voice. Never mind. It wasn't... It was oh, it wasn't... Sorry, Karen. I'm trying to make you a man. Who <laughs> gets a point? Okay, so if you press mode, you've got to see, because that's where our settings are, you've got to make sure that degrees is in bold. Like if it's radians are in bold, you got to swap it. So literally scroll over one and press enter. If you've already typed it in, you'll have to retype it in again. Okay, so just so we went over calculator settings. So let's go to the next page you completed. You had some problems where you had to find the, um, the angle, which you then get to use the inverse button. But I think those make sense because you're like, well, sine's next to x. How do I kill off sine? I use inverse sine. I don't know how she explained that. I'm, I'm, you don't have time for all that. Never mind. Are there any questions about 7, 8, 9? Did anyone have any issues solving for an angle? Six? Oh, the missing one? Yeah. Go back and let's see Okay, so uh, this is, I know because this is across from the right angle. This is the hypotenuse. 
the 9, is it going to be the opposite or the adjacent? It's going to be the opposite. Yeah, because it's the furthest away from that 70. And then so next to the 70 is the adjacent. So we have adjacent and opposite. So do we need sine, cosine, or tangent? So in case you're confused and you need to write Sakatoa, you can. The reason it's not sine or cosine is because sine and cosine need the hypotenuse. We don't have a value for the hypotenuse. So that's why we have to pick tangent. So tangent of 70, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so 9 over x. i got to solve for x, but sadly that requires a little work, so I multiply both sides by x. I get x tan 70 equals 9. I divide by tan 70, and I get 9 divided by tan 70. x equals 9 divided by tan 70. I literally type it in my calculator just like that. 9 divided by 10, 70, and I get 3.3, .3. and the reason I'm rounding to one decimal place is because the direction said 10. Otherwise, I'm like you, I'm like, how many decimal places should I go? I don't know. Okay, so we did that one. You said you were good at the inverse ones. Did anyone need help with the bottom three? When you had to find an X and a Y. Okay, I'm assuming you're good to go. Now, my understanding was on page six, you had been assigned one through five. Is this correct? Mm -hmm. And my understanding was that this is the, the page that says 6 at the bottom. My understanding was you've been assigned 1 through 5 and that you also were supposed to do how many on the next page? 1 through 6. That's what I thought. So if I were to walk around right now, I'm assuming my feelings would be hurt and you would not have these done. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, not cool, but it's not. We're, 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 I can adjust. So what, what I'm going to say is clearly we're going to work on the study guide tomorrow. The test is Wednesday. I'm not pregnant anymore, so I can actually walk around and help you and not feel miserable. So I would gladly walk around and help you one-on-one -on -one with any of these. I'm also going to say if you're trying to get some bonus, I'm going to check this tomorrow. So Cooper has to have one through five and one through six done in order to get this homework grade tomorrow because he's needing some nice scores to help this average here at the end. But if he's trying to get higher than that, any problems you complete additionally will get you extra points. So let's say I think right now one through five plus one through six is 11 points. Well, there are 27 total. So you could get a lot more, a lot more points if you'd like to. Now, I totally understand if you're like, nope, not doing the word one. I, I'm, I'm kind of lazy like you too. But anyway, so if you want to work any extra ones, get extra points, which would also be extra practice before this test happens on Wednesday, that would be genius of you. Okay, are there any questions about this? Then I'm going to walk around and try to help you and get your life right. But 